Antique Auction, November 6th and 8th, 1978, 115 North Sandusky Street, Tiffin, Ohio. Louisa K. Fast was 100 years old. Those two days, generations of treasured memories were sold. The house she had called home for close to 100 years was also sold. Louisa moved into the Riverfront Manor nursing home south of Tiffin, Ohio. Who was Louisa K. Fast? Louisa K. Fast was born in Canton, Ohio, January 15, 1878. Her parents, Melanchthon Luther Fast and Louisa Maria Kuhn were married November 30th, 1865 in Old Trinity Episcopal Church, Tiffin, Ohio. They had five children, Robert, Frederick, Anne, Helen, who died shortly after birth, and our subject, Louisa Kay. Louisa's father was a respected, wealthy Canton, Ohio businessman. He was involved in a number of businesses and was a part owner of the Boward Fast and Company, Canton, Ohio. A local newspaper reported that Melanchthon had a money exchange scheme going with the J.D. Easter and Company of Chicago, Illinois. His older brother, Daniel Fast, was the financial manager of that firm. When the J.D. Eastern Company went bankrupt in 1877, the Ballard Fast and Company soon followed suit. Everything Melanchthon and Louisa Marie had was seized and eventually sold at auction. Their wealth and standing in the community was gone. Melanchthon sank into a deep depression compounding his numerous health issues. He died December 10, 1877, at the age of 45. To make matters worse, Melanchthon's wife, Louisa Marie, was eight months pregnant. She gave birth almost a month after her husband's death to our story subject, Louisa K. Fast, on January 15, 1878. Louisa Marie never recovered from Louisa's birth. She died two weeks later, January 30, 1878, at the age of 29 years old. The four living fast children were now orphaned and in need of a home. From Louisa M. Fast Obituary, February 7, 1878. She was the mother of five children, four of whom, two boys and two girls, are still living. The eldest, 11 years old, and the youngest, but two weeks. These she has committed to the protection and guidance of Providence and the loving care of her friends. My, my family was very intimate with the McKinley family. My, my mother and father had been in the same history club with the McKinleys, and uh, for a time he was my guardian when I was, before I was brought over here. And um, so I used to go to Canton to visit a great deal. My brothers and my sisters lived there. After their mother's death, Louise's brothers and sisters were taken in by the paternal family, grandfather Reverend John Jacob Fast and grandmother Anne Slanker Fast. They lived in Canton, Ohio. Baby Louisa Kay, at three weeks old, was taken to live with the maternal family, grandfather Dr. Henry Kuhn and grandmother Maria Pennington Kuhn in Tiffin, Ohio. Sometime in or around 1880, Louisa's Aunt Emma and Uncle William Kimball purchased the Luther Hall House, 115 North Sandusky Street. 
They enlarged and remodeled the house so Grandma Coon and two-year-old Louisa Kay could live with them. Louisa would call this home for the next 98 years. Louisa spent her childhood growing up in Tiffin, Ohio. The 1880s was a booming time for the city of Tiffin, Ohio. Natural gas and oil was discovered, a new courthouse, brick streets, a whirlwind of change. Louisa Kay was first homeschooled by her grandmother, Maria Kuhn. Louisa spoke very fondly of her grandmother. She was a woman of gentle temperament and uh, devoted uh, to her church and to her family. And uh, as I was left an orphan at the age of, of three weeks, my father having died a month before I was born, and my mother three weeks after that, uh, she took me under her wing, and it was under her gentle influence that I lived until I was 13 years old. In about 1885, Louisa entered the third grade at the newly built Miami Street School. This beautiful building is still in use today as Tiffin University's main classroom building. When she was around 12 years old, 1890, she graduated to the seventh grade and attended the Minerva Street School. This building was located where the Noble Elementary School is located today. Around this time, Louisa's grandmother, Maria Pennington Kuhn, died late August of 1891. Governor William McKinley visited the Kimballs in Tiffin, Ohio. A number of records show McKinley had a special bond with the Fast children, as well as being friends with the Fast and Kimball families in Canton, Ohio. Louisa's parents had lived a block and a half north of the McKinley home in the later 1860s and 1870s. In 1893, 15-year-old Louisa and her older sister Anne traveled to Chicago, Illinois and the World's Columbian Exposition. I remember one kindness that he did, which I'll never forget. Shows his, his personal uh, uh, kindness. My sister and I had gone to Chicago to the World's Fair. And uh, at that time, he was governor of Hawaii. And they, in the big manufacturers building, they were having this, uh, uh, this Ohio day. And uh, suddenly all the people were crowded back, you see, against a row. The, the governor was coming. And here came the procession of all the dignitaries and the governor. And when he saw us standing there, he stopped all that parade, shook hands with us. Now, he didn't have to do that. You know, it just showed how kind he was. This was a very fond memory of Louisa's, which she shared many times. When it became time for a higher education, Aunt Emma's search found the prestigious women's college in Northampton, Massachusetts, Smith College. To be qualified to enter Smith College, Louisa was enrolled in the Heidelberg Academy a college preparatory high school affiliated with Heidelberg University, Tiffin, Ohio. Louisa attended the Heidelberg Academy from 1892 to 1894. Sixteen-year-old Louisa was accepted in the 1894 Smith College freshman class. She was the first young woman from Tiffin, Ohio to attend an Eastern United States College. 20-year-old Louisa graduated June 21, 1898 with a Bachelor of Arts degree, Smith College class of 1898. After her graduation from Smith College, Louisa was invited to visit President William McKinley at the White House. And then when I was graduating from college, we went to the White House to dinner with the McKinley. 
I've never forgotten that particular occasion. For one reason, I expected to have at least patty de foie gras, and we had beefsteak and apple pie. Not many months after Louisa's college graduation and return to Tiffin, Ohio, her Aunt Emma died. Emma never had any children of her own. She was a good aunt and a mother figure for Louisa. She brought her up well. Aunt Emma died in Louisa's arms November 14, 1898. 1900. A new century and 22-year-old Louisa is living in Tiffin, Ohio with her uncle Will Kimball. After graduation in 1898, she found employment at the local Loomis House Public Library as an assistant librarian. Um, back to McKinley, just a moment, um, since he was assassinated in 1901, do you have any recollections of your reactions or the things at the time of the assassination of McKinley and uh, Well, Buffalo? I do remember, uh, of course, the deep shock we felt. As I remember it, I heard it the same day. It seems to me Queen Victoria died the same day, at least within a day or two. Uh, I didn't go. My uncle, Mr. Kimball, went to the funeral in Canton, and of course it was a very impressive occasion. And uh, I used to see Mrs. McKinley after that occasion down in Canton, she stayed there as a widow, and uh, while she still had the, the epileptic seizures she was accustomed to having, uh, she, she entertained a good deal. I mean, people went to see her. In 1906, 28-year-old Louisa was chairwoman of the Ohio Federation of Women's Library Project. Their goal was to improve the libraries of Ohio. At this time, very few communities in Ohio had organized public libraries, and traveling libraries were being introduced. Through those organized efforts, many new libraries were built. The new Carnegie Library in Tiffin, Ohio was built in 1912. In the fall of 1917, 39-year-old Louisa is heading the formation of donated books for the military library at Camp Sherman in Chillicothe, Ohio. While doing this work, she lived at the Burton Stevenson home. Burton Stevenson was head librarian in Chillicothe, Ohio. Louisa said that through this contact, she was later offered a job as librarian in Paris, France. In mid-January 1918, Louisa left Camp Sherman, just months before the Spanish influenza swept through the camp. The summer of 1918, almost 1,800 soldiers died at Camp Sherman. Louisa was a committee member of the Smith College World War I Relief Unit. In June of 1918, this committee was succeeded by the Smith College War Service Board. Louisa was a member of both. Louisa took a more active role in the Smith College World War I Relief Unit and moved to Boston, Massachusetts, the 1st of February, 1918. She became the secretary treasurer at the Relief Unit's office, 382 Boylston Street, Boston, Massachusetts. The Smith College World War I Relief Unit was a group of Smith College alumni who aided in humanitarian relief work in France during and after the First World War. November 26, 1918, Louisa made application for a passport to France and service with the American Library Association. The American Library Association in Paris was part of the wartime program known as the Library War Service. Burton Egbert Stevenson was a key person in establishing the library in Paris.
Mission goals were to supply books and periodicals to military personnel at home and overseas. Since the war was over and troops were returning home, the military library in Paris was left with a large collection of books. It was decided to share the books with institutions that had connections to the library during the war. This became one of the main tasks for Louisa. Louisa found that a number of first edition books were donated to the library. Those books were separated and donated to the Library of Congress. This task took Louisa almost a year to complete. On September 26, 1919, Louisa's passport was amended to work with the Smith College War Relief Unit. It stated she was released from the American Library Association at this time. In December of 1919, Louisa returned home to Tiffin, Ohio and her library job. Serving in post-war France with the Smith College Relief Unit and the American Library Association must have been fulfilling as well as a valuable learning experience for her. When Louisa returned home in December of 1919, the 19th Women's Suffrage Amendment had already been passed by the House of Representatives and the Senate. 36 states had to approve the amendment for adoption for it to go into effect. This took place August 18, 1920. The 19th Amendment's adoption was certified on August 26, 1920. Louisa, now 42 years old, attended a large meeting in celebration in Cleveland, Ohio. And my first recollection of a big meeting was one in Cleveland, uh, where uh, uh, Mrs. Catt spoke and Judge Florence Allen also. Judge Allen, as I recall it, had lost a brother in the war. Uh, the women had gone prepared with some sort of a speech encouraging feminism. But instead of that, they threw aside their uh, speeches, which they had uh, planned, and they talked in favor of universal peace, a very stirring uh, appeal from both of them. And uh, they urged the League of Women Voters, which was then being formed after the women got the vote, uh, to throw their interest and their strength into the uh, movement for peace. So the League of Women Voters has always had a very strong uh, leaning in that direction. Sometime in 1920, Louisa was employed by the League of Women Voters to travel throughout Ohio and organize local chapters. Uh, right after that, I was employed by them as a, uh, as a sort of state organizer of the League of Women Voters here in Ohio. It was, it was uphill work, as those new organizations, women always say, there are too many organizations, I can't, we can't have another organization. But uh, while I, I can't say that I was a shining light as an organizer, I got to have an acquaintance with the women of the state and their interests and their point of view on, on various matters, which has been useful to me all the rest of my life in any kind of work that I did. It was not long after that that I was asked to go to New York and work in what was called the International Relations Office of the League of Women Voters. Miss Ruth Morgan, who was a member of a very distinguished uh, uh, New York family, not J. Pierpont, but one that went way back farther than he did, uh, had a, uh, insisted on having an, uh, an office in New York uh, where she felt there was more possibility of action. Though we went back and forth to Washington constantly. And uh, it was that, about that time that Mrs. Catt formed what was called the meetings of the conferences on the cause and cure of war. 
In 1922, 44-year-old Louisa took a new position as secretary and director of the American Association of University Women's Club in Paris, France. The Paris Club was created to provide a residence for American University women who were studying in France. The club also provided a meeting place for various groups. While working in Paris, Louisa would often meet or make contact with many noted and famous people of that era. Louisa spent five years in France. She traveled to Switzerland, Germany, Holland, England, and Belgium. She made trips back to the United States in 1923 and 1925. In 1927, the Paris Club was closed. Louisa, now close to 50 years old, returned to the United States in August of 1927. A digital file of an oil painting has been found of Louisa. The painting is a very well done portrait and it appears to be from her time in Paris. The name Louisa K. Fass brings on thoughts of women's suffrage and human rights. Remember, besides women's rights in 1920, the newly reorganized League of Women Voters made world peace one of their major goals. This was a pet project of League's leader, Carrie Chapman Cadd. In 1928, we find 50-year-old Louisa is director of the Office of International Relations Branch of the League of Women Voters, New York City. Another of her titles, Secretary of the Department of International Cooperation to Prevent War. She was a featured speaker giving seminars and lectures about education, foreign relations, women's rights, and world peace. Her travels took her to most states in the Union. December 14, 1928, a newspaper article reports Louisa K. Fass giving a talk in support of the Kellogg Treaty. She explained the treaty to a group and had discussions following the talk. While it was a valiant effort to create a pact to settle international disputes by peaceful means, the pact fell short. A number of overlooked loopholes rendered the agreement completely ineffective. The 1930s were depression years and budgets were drastically cut. Membership fell from 100,000 in 1924 to 44,000 in 1934. Members had meetings in private homes in neighborhood halls. Fundraising efforts were made. While the original goals for the League remained a priority, a new concern for democratic principle was now an issue. This included the threat to democracy and the importance of informed individuals for the continued success of democracy. The 12th International Conference, sponsored by the International Alliance of Women for Suffrage and Equal Citizenship, was held in Istanbul, Turkey, April 1935. Louisa, who was now 57 years old, was one of 10 delegates from the United States to attend. Louisa handled public relations for this conference. The honored Mrs. Carrie Chapman Catt, the delegation leader, became ill and was unable to attend. Louisa took charge and with the help of other delegates filled in for Mrs. Catt. October 26, 1939. Louisa spoke to the Knox County League of Women Voters, Knoxville, Tennessee. Her talk was about the change status in certain countries and emphasized the urgent duty of American women to preserve the democratic principle. For 20 years, the League of Women Voters have promoted world peace. The many years of educating, organizing, supporting treaties, and uniting people of the world was all in vain. 
With the spread of fascism in Germany, Hitler declared himself the supreme leader. Democracy was ended and insanity was the rule of the day. In 1939, World War II broke out in Europe and the United States was soon involved. The war proved to be the deadliest conflict in history. The casualties are estimated to be 60 to 80 million lives, with many millions being injured, as well as total destruction of cities and countries. After World War II, the United Nations Charter was signed. What the League of Women Voters had worked so hard for was now finally realized. The United Nations is an organization of countries working together and arbitrating international conflict. Louisa was 62 years old in 1940 and had kept ownership of her aunt and uncle's house in Tiffin, Ohio. This is the same house that she and Grandmother Coon moved into when she was two years old. When living elsewhere, she would rent her house and reserve a bedroom and kitchen privileges. Louise's retirement years were filled with many projects. I wonder if she ever fully retired. Louisa belonged to a number of local clubs and organizations. The American Association of University Women, the Seneca County Museum Board, the Soar Optimus International of Tiffin and in Seneca County, the Tiffin, Ohio Chapter of League of Women Voters, and Louisa was a lifelong member of Old Trinity Episcopal Church. She was an active member in the Episcopal Church Women's Group. One of Louisa's most enjoyable activities was her visits to Smith College. She attended many of the graduation events over the years. A newspaper story in 1971 reported that 93-year-old Louisa would be driving, by herself, the 655 miles to Smith College, Northampton, Massachusetts. It is reported in 1976, at the age of 98, she made her last visit to her alma mater. Living to be 101 years old, she was the oldest alumni for a good number of years. May 11, 1976, Heidelberg University's president, Leslie H. Fischel, Jr., conferred 98-year-old Louisa K. Fast with an honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree. She was recognized for humanitarian service, leadership in the community, and in the area of women's responsibility. President Gerald Ford sent a congratulatory letter to Miss Fast May 11, 1976. Louisa's 100th birthday, January 15, 1978, Louisa K. Fast Day, by proclamation of Mayor Thomas L. Yeager, Tiffin, Ohio. In 1978, the Tiffin Park and Recreation Board named Park No. 5 the Louisa K. Fast Park. The 2.3-acre park is located northeast of Tiffin, Ohio on State Route 101. In 1980, Louisa K. Fast was inducted into the Ohio Women's Hall of Fame in the category of Women's Suffrage and Cultural Activism. Louisa K. Fass died November 6, 1979 at Riverfront Manor Nursing Home, Seneca County, Ohio. There was no visitation, but a memorial service was held November 16, 1979 at Old Trinity Episcopal Church, Tiffin, Ohio. She is buried with her father, mother, and family in West Lawn Cemetery, Section C, Canton, Ohio. Louise's close friend, Myron Bruce Barnes, wrote, Louisa was often referred to as Tiffin's First Lady. She was known to many people through the many, many talks she gave to local groups. 
She was generous within her means to her church and to charities. She never saw a stranger and was always a warm, outgoing person. She never had a big income, but she was always involved in a cause which she was dedicated. Arid, a crowning glory, was always her wit and good humor. She was a socialite, but first of all, a true friend of the people.